Hola a todos y bienvenidos. Welcome to the special Coffee Break Spanish webinar. Now, this is a Coffee Break Spanish webinar. We're broadcasting on our Coffee Break Spanish Facebook page and on YouTube. And of course, we'll also be having this available after the event. So you can be watching live or you can watch it later if you prefer. Um, if you're watching live, then you can take part. We'll be looking forward to your comments and looking forward to your responses. Now, um, what I should also say is that it is a, a very focused event because we're looking at something very specific and that is the imperfect tense in Spanish and how to use the imperfect. Now, because this is going out on, fa on, on Facebook, it's the Coffee Break Spanish uh, Facebook page, but if we are broadcasting on YouTube, you may not necessarily be a Spanish learner. We've actually just finished a French broadcast along the same lines, but we were looking at a different topic. But for now, we're going to be focusing on Spanish and we're going to be looking at the imperfect tense. I should introduce myself. I'm Mark. Yo soy Mark. Uh, yo soy director de Radio Lingua, de Coffee Break Languages. Y también, pues, soy el, el, el profesor de Coffee Break Spanish. Uno de los profesores, claro. Uno de los profesores. Porque tenemos a mucha, a mucha gente que, que nos ayuda con todo. We've got lots of people helping us with all of the Coffee Break Spanish content. Today, we are focusing on a particular topic, and that is coming out of our Masterclass course. And this is a, a special course that lasts six months, and I'll be telling you a little more about this course a bit later on. And the, the key thing to remember is the fact that this course begins tomorrow. So it's from September through to February, and as I say, I'll explain a little more about that a bit later on. But for now, let me make sure that we have got the correct slides because I've just realized I've still got the French um, presentation open. So I better open up the Spanish presentation, which would be much more useful for this one. Um, let me see if we can just get this open here and then we will be ready to begin. So if I press this button here, um, let me see. Hopefully, 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 you will be able to see the Spanish presentation. There we go. I knew that this would work. So we are going to be looking at mastering the imperfect tense. Before we get started, let me know where you're watching, how long you've been learning Spanish for, and uh, it will be nice to see hello to some of you so that we can uh, welcome you officially to the, 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 the live broadcast. Um, so do let me know where you're watching and uh, if you've got any questions at any point, then simply pop them in the comments, but it would be really useful if you can put the word question beforehand and that way I'll see them very clearly and also the team who's behind the scenes um, will be able to answer your question if it involves a link or something like that um, but we'll be able to see it more clearly if you write question and I'll be asking you to, to put some things in the comments as we go along but do let me know where you're watching. We've got Ruth joining us in Vermont. Uh, Ruth has been learning Spanish for two and a half years. Fantastic. Um, uh, Brianna has uh, been learning for about 30 years. You never stop learning, that's the, the key thing. Um, we've got Will joining us in the Boston area, has been learning Spanish on and off since 2011, 2011. Um, we've got lots of Canadians today, so we've got Prakash uh, for two years in, uh, learning in Canada. Uh, Monique in Ottawa uh, has been learning for uh, three years. Mark's watching in Denver, Colorado, and Mark has been learning for four years. Um, Rachel's in a tiny village in central Maine and she's been learning for three years. Um, we've got Oiku, who is Turkish, living in England. Um, and and Turku, uh, sorry, Oiku doesn't like the imperfect tense. Uh, well, we're going to be helping you with that today. Um, Caroline's joining us from Cardiff and Caroline has been joining us, uh, has been learning for two years. Uh, Anna, oh, sorry, Anna rather. Anna's living in Germany, but you're from Glasgow. Muy bien. Um, so lots of you joining us from all over the place. We've got Tina in Sweden. Um, study a couple of years, want to talk more. Yet bra. Um, we've got Talia in California, on and off for 20 years. Uh, haley has been uh, learning for in bits and pieces for about 20 years and is from Washington, US and she loves Coffee Break Spanish. Um, we're delighted to have you all here. Um, thank you all. Uh, we've got Nigel in Niagara Falls in Canada, going to Bogota for a month soon. Fantastic. 
having a reason to learn a language is always really important because I think that gives you the purpose, it gives you that motivation and it gives you the, the, the real reason to take that language and use it and, and learn further. However, sometimes one of the key things is the fact that you're, you, you, to have the confidence to be able to use it. If you're like me, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, you want to get things right. And getting things right means being confident in the uh, the, the, the the use of the language and in the structures of the language and, and being able to say things. Now, some people would argue that you you, you shouldn't worry about getting things right. And I, I do believe that. I think it's important just to go for it and try to speak. But there does come a point when you want to be right and in order to communicate, then it is very useful to have a little bit of the, the grammar and to an understanding of how the language works rather than just learn some phrases. Now, we're going to be looking at, uh, I wonder if I can use this button here. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm going to use those buttons here. We're going to be looking at uh, the imperfect, as I said. So um, we're going to be talking about the imperfect tense and, and kind of mastering the imperfect tense in, in this section. And then we're going to be talking a little about the masterclass itself and what happens in the masterclass. And then I'll be very happy to answer any questions that you have. This particular topic comes from our fourth module on uh, the masterclass, and that is a module on tense mastery. So we'll be looking at different tenses in that module, but today we're focusing on one, and that is the imperfect. Let's get started and let's look at the imperfect tense a little more now. I'm going to give you a phrase in English. Sometimes I think it's really useful to start from the point of English. If you're a native English speaker, you're familiar with that language, and then you can start applying what you know about English to the other language. And obviously some things are the same, some things are different, and it's in knowing what's different and what's the same that you can really master it. So let's look at this sentence. We went to Argentina and Chile last year. <laughs> it's a bit of a bad example because let's face it, no one went anywhere last year. Um, but uh, it's a, an example here just for the, the purposes of this lesson. Um, another sentence could be, I have travelled to lots of South American countries. And one final example, my father used to live in Buenos Aires. Let's think about this. Let's think about this because we've got three different situations. We went to Argentina and Chile last year. That is a single event. It happened in the past and it's something that is, is very clear, that is a, a nari, that is a kind of a part of your narration. It's part of a story. We went to Argentina and Chile last year. Thum, it's happened. Boom, it's finished. Okay. I have travelled to lots of South American countries. So you're then talking about a time in the past and during that time in the past, it might be a long time, it might be a shorter time. The chances are, though, you're still referring to yesterday or even this morning. Your experience up until this point is that you have travelled to lots of South American countries. And then the third example, my father used to live in Buenos Aires. So there we're talking about something that used to be the case but is no longer. So that happened for a period of time. And that time is closed because my father now lives in Washington. Okay, so we've got three different examples here. In English, we've got we went to Argentina and Chile last year. I have travelled to lots of South American countries. And my father used to live in Buenos Aires. And in actual fact, each of those would take a different tense in Spanish. As I said, we're focusing on the imperfect today. But just to, to be clear, what we would probably use in most places is a preterite for the first one. In most places, a perfect for the second one, depending slightly on the location and slightly on the context. And in that third one, we'd be looking at an imperfect tense. So let's look at what the imperfect tense is used for. Repeated actions in the past, something that you did on a repeated basis. Or ongoing actions in the past. And we're going to be looking at plenty of examples of these. So don't worry too much about this just now. We're just kind of defining this for the moment. So repeated actions in the past, ongoing actions in the past, and very crucially, incomplete actions in the past. Things that happened in the past and they're still happening or they, they were happening for some time in the past. And it's also used for a state of being when you're talking about feelings or weather, descriptions. And indeed, let's take that descriptions a little further. It describes what we used to do. So, for example, 
I used to dance every day. When I was young, I used to dance every day. Now I don't. Uh, right now I've got a, 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 a moon boot on because I, I ruptured my Achilles tendon three months ago and I'm still wearing my moon boot. But I used to dance every day. I didn't really. But I used to dance every day. I used to walk around every day, but now I can't. But that's another story. So it's also used for something that was done on more than one occasion. Okay. Another way of thinking about the imperfect is where it can translate a tricky word. And that word is would. But we've got to be very, very careful with the imperfect tense when we're translating would. Because would can also be used to translate what we call a conditional. For example, if I were rich, I would buy a yacht. That would is the conditional. It's dependent on me being rich. So there's a condition to me being rich. And therefore, that would be a would conditional. However, if we look at a sentence like this, as a teenager, I would go to my uncle's every weekend. There that would really can be placed with used to. So when would is referring to the past and you can replace would with used to, then you use the imperfect tense. And when we're talking about a repeated action in the past. Okay, so far so good. The imperfect should be used to talk about most descriptions in the past. Things like people, if you're describing people or places or the clothes that someone was wearing or feelings or the weather, these are all areas where you would use the imperfect. And one of the key things is that when you know the triggers for the imperfect, that will help you to remember to use that particular tense. And here are some of the triggers here. We've got a veces sometimes, frecuentemente, frequently, cada día, every day, siempre, always, de vez en cuando, from time to time, todos los días, every day, todas las semanas, every week. So you can see all of these are triggers which describe something that was happening on a regular basis and it was an ongoing thing. So a veces, Hacía mis, mis deberes eh, delante de la televisión. So sometimes I used to do my homework in front of the television. Um, siempre hablaba con mi padre por la mañana. I always used to talk with my father in the morning. We're going to look at some more examples here, but those triggers will definitely help you with the imperfect tense. It can also be used to describe what was happening when something else happened. For example, we were watching TV when Rachel arrived. In Coffee Break Spanish season two, when we were looking at this for the first time, we talked of the rollers. We were watching TV when Rachel arrived. Thum. So that was an ongoing thing that was interrupted by something else. So we were playing football when a dog ran onto the pitch. Now, we've got another way of doing this in Spanish using estar plus the gerund, but we're not going to go into that today. We want to focus on solely the imperfect. So that's when you use the imperfect. All of these situations are, are when you use the imperfect. And again, we're going to be looking at more examples. But what I'd like to do just now is just check where we are with things. Does this all make sense? If it makes sense, what I'd like you to do is put a one in the comments. Just type the word, or not the word, type the number one and press return. And then that way I'll see that it's making sense. If it's a little bit complicated, then put a two. If you're completely lost, put a three. But it's really useful to me to see how this is going, to see whether this is making sense to you and if you are gaining something from this. So it's always useful to, to have your feedback like that. I can see one's coming in. That is really good news. I'm delighted. Don't worry if, if you're not following this. If it's really complicated for you, then I would suggest you check out our Coffee Break Spanish Season 1 content, which is for beginners. So great to see some ones. In fact, lots and lots of ones. That's fantastic. Let's look at how to form the imperfect, because this is where the, the, the really good news comes. In actual fact, the imperfect tense is very straightforward and also very regular. Now, it's not often you hear that about Spanish verbs, that things are very regular, but yes, this is indeed a very regular tense. So let's take a little look at how the, pod, the, how the, the formation of the imperfect works. For AR verbs, we add endings 
to the stem of the verb. So what's the, the stem? The stem is when we take off that ER and we're left with the stem. So let's take the verb hablar. Um, I'll just type this in, hablar. So we've got hablar here. Let me increase the size of that. Hablar, to get the, the, uh, the stem, we're going to take off the AR and we get ab. And then, of course, we can add these endings to that stem. So if I just remove these from the screen and let's bring in their endings. And uh, these endings are ava, avas, ava, avamos, avais, avan. So let's put this together. Uh, can I just double check one thing? No, we're going to go back to here. Um, let me see if I can bring this in again. Yep. So we're going to take the verb hablar. Let's conjugate that together with these endings. So hablaba, I was talking, or I used to talk, hablaba. You were talking, hablabas, or you used to talk. He or she or it or you formal, usted, was talking, or you were talking, obviously. Hablaba, so again, ava ending, hablaba. We were talking, hablábamos, hablábamos, and watch your stress there, hablábamos. You all were talking, hablabais, and then they were talking, or ustedes, the plural uh, formal form, hablaban. Let's go through all of that again, and we're going to use hablar again. So, hablaba, hablabas, hablaba, hablábamos, hablabais, hablaban. Muy bien. Let's do it with one more. Let's take uh, bailar, to dance. I was dancing, bailaba. You were dancing, bailabas. He, she, it, or you, uh, formal, were dancing, uh, uh, bailaba. We all were dancing, bailabamos. You were dancing, bailabais. Uh, they, they were dancing, bailaban. So it's really straightforward and if you don't yet know, I am a huge fan of ABBA and I love this particular verb for that very reason. And I'm sure I've mentioned that once or twice before. So that is AR verbs. We add those endings to the stem of the verb. Now, first bit of good news. In fact, we've already had that first bit of good news. Verbs are pretty regular in the imperfect. Second bit of good news. Um, our verbs in ER and IR both work the same. So there's a different set of endings for ER and IR verbs from the AR verbs, but they're both the same. So let's take these endings and look at them. They are, they're a little bit different. Ia, Ias, Ia, Iamos, Iais, Ian. So here we've got ER and IR verbs. Let's take Bender, to sell. I was selling, Bendia. You were selling, Bendias. He or she or it was selling, Bendia or Usted Bendia. We all were selling, vendíamos. You all were selling, vendíais. And they were selling, vendían, or ustedes vendían. The same would work for an IR verb. Let's take abrir, to open. So, abría, abrías, abría, abríamos, abríais, abrían. Now, when we consider the ABA endings and the IA endings, once you've got that kind of main bit of it, the ABA or the IA, then all of the rest fall into place. The pattern is the same. So you don't really need to worry very much about this tense. We've got these ia endings, we've got the ava endings, so we pretty much know all the regular verbs now. Are you ready for uh, good news, piece of good news number three? Well, you won't believe this, but there are only three irregular verbs in the imperfect. That's the best bit of news uh, the, the entire day. Only three irregular verbs in the imperfect, and these are ir, ser, and ver. And once again, once you get past the, the stem part, once you get the, the, the form of them, they are very regular. They follow exactly the same pattern as these other verbs. So, ir, iva, ivas, iva, ivamos, ivais, ivan, I was going, you were going, he, she, it, you plural, uh, you polite rather, were going, íbamos, íbais, íban, we were going, you all were going, they were going. So that's ir. Then we've got ser, 
and I'm sure you're recognizing this, you'll have seen this, era, eras, era, eramos, erais, eran. Again, it's the same pattern. And there, ver kind of takes a little extra in there. We would use the ia ending, but we stick an extra i in as well. So, veía, veías, veía, veíamos, veíais, veían. So, what we've done, let's bring uh, this back full screen. What we've done, just need to change a little plug here. Let me do that. There we go. Oh, I should be in focus. There we go, back in focus. What we have done is look at the imperfect tense, how it's used and how it's formed. And believe it or not, in the past 23 minutes, or the past really 13 minutes since we actually started this lesson, we now know everything that we need to know about the imperfect tense. We know how to form it with regular AR verbs, with regular ER and IR verbs, using either the AVA forms or the IA forms. We know how to use it, as in when it's used for ongoing actions in the past, for repeated things, when we're translating was doing something, or when we're translating used to do something, or indeed that special would do something. When I was young, I would walk along the beach in the sunset and all that kind of stuff. So it's we know when to use it, we know how to use it, and we even know all of the imperfect tense irregular verbs. Fantastic. Not bad work for 23 or 24 minutes into this session. So my question again to you is, how does this sound? Does it sound good so far? Are we understanding everything? If so, please put a one in the chat. Um, or if you're struggling a little, then a two. And if it doesn't make any sense at all, a three will be fine too. We're going to put this into context now. We're going to do a little bit of listening. And this listening is taken from our masterclass. So you're going to get a, a sneak preview of some of the content from our listening uh, materials. And uh, this is a conversation between two people. Um, and uh, we'll find out a little more about these two people. Now, crucially, we're going to listen without any transcript first. And when we listen without the transcript, you're going to be trying to listen very carefully, particularly for those imperfect tenses. Afterwards, we'll uh, move on and listen with the transcript. So it will give you a chance to, to hear what's being said while you're reading it on the screen. Now, let me just see if I can make this come back on the screen. We'll bring this up. Yeah, we've got the dialogue here. So hopefully, if this all goes according to plan, I can bring in the audio and I'll just mute my mic so that you can hear the audio of this conversation. And I'll actually just take me off the screen too. We're going to listen to the dialogue. Um, the dialogue is between two people, Rosa and Mark. That's me and Rosa. Um, and you're going to be listening to a, a conversation about a piece of homework. That's what I'll say about this so far. So let me take me out and we'll play the dialogue now. Tengo que pedirte un favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. Por supuesto. Estupendo. Pues vamos a empezar. Primera pregunta. ¿Cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? Aproximadamente, claro. ¿Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos, por ejemplo? Pues no lo recuerdo exactamente, pero... Yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Íbamos más temprano, pero siempre comíamos en casa. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de la casa? Sí, ayudamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla... Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias. De nada. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Rosa finished off the, the, the interview there quite quickly, but we had lots of good examples of our imperfect tenses. Okay, so you were listening there to a section of audio from our masterclass audio lessons in which you heard Rosa and me talking about a particular trabajo de clase, a, a piece of homework. Now, what we'll do again is listen to this. It'll be a little slower this time and we'll have the dialogue on the screen. If I can bring this on just now, there we go. And we'll listen again and then we'll go through the whole thing so that you understand everything. Let's take a listen to the second reading. Tengo que pedirte un favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? 
tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. Por supuesto. Estupendo. Pues vamos a empezar. Primera pregunta. ¿Cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? Aproximadamente, claro. ¿Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos? Pues no lo recuerdo exactamente, pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Íbamos más tempranos, pero siempre comíamos en casa. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de casa? Sí, ayudábamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla... Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias, Mar. Okay, so hopefully that made sense, a little more sense when you can see what's in front of you. Let's go through this. In particular, really, we're going to pay attention to these imperfect tenses. So Rosa begins by saying, Tengo que pedirte un favor. I have to ask you a favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Can I ask you some questions for un trabajo de clase? Uh, uh, like a, a work of class, a piece of homework. Tengo que comparar, excuse me, ¿Cómo viven las niñas hoy? Eh, sorry, tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. So I've got to compare how young people or children live nowadays and how they used to live hace años, years ago. So there we've got a used to do something. The vivían from vivir, the verb to live. And of course it's an IR verb and it's ending in ian because that's the, the formation of it. So I say, por supuesto, of course. Rosa then says, estupendo. Pues vamos a empezar. Great, let's begin. Primera pregunta. ¿Cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? How many hours of class did you used to have at school? Aproximadamente, claro. Approximately, of course. So tenías from tener. Again, it's an ER verb. Tener is obviously one of those verbs that we think, oh, alarm bells. It's an irregular verb in normal situations. But, of course, the great news is, in the imperfect, it's regular. So, tenías from tener. Did you have, did you used to have, that kind of thing. Pues, puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos, por, por ejemplo. You can compare this with your children's timetable, for example. So, we're talking about school timetables and how many hours of class that, you, that, that I had when I was young. I see. Pues no lo recuerdo exactamente, pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. I don't remember exactly, but I was in a class. There we've got estaba. Now, to be, estar, estaba, I was being, doesn't sound quite right. So we can translate it with a simple past in English. I was in class menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. More time than what are my children. So I spent longer in school than my children do. Íbamos, they were here, one of our irregular verbs, but of course we can understand it because it's very straightforward. Íbamos más temprano. We uh, went on an earlier, we went earlier basically, we went there earlier, pero siempre comíamos en casa, but we always had lunch at home. So that, the, the idea there is by the time we finished school, we came home for lunch. So the, the situation here is a Spanish school context. So you go early in the morning, but then you come back before your lunch, which would be um, mid-afternoon within a UK context anyway. So that's the first part of the conversation. Let's look at the second one now. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? Then we've got hacer, another very irregular verb, but Hacer ends in ER. What do we do with ER verbs? We take off the ER and add the IAS endings. So, IA, IAS, IA, IAMOS, IAIS, IAN. ¿Qué hacías? What did you used to do in your free time? I say, en mi tiempo libre, solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. So, this is a lovely verb, soler. Soler means to tend to do something. So, I tended to, solía leer y jugar. I tended to read and play with my uh, brothers and sisters and my neighbours. Rosa asks, 
ayudabas con las tareas de, la casa, de casa? Did you used to help? Then we've got an ER verb. A lovely ER verb that therefore ends in ava ending. So ayudabas, did you help? Did you used to help con las tareas uh, de casa? Um, sí, ayudábamos todos. Um, we all helped. Ayudábamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticos. Um, domésticas, sorry, las tareas domésticas. So it's true that my mom took charge of the majority of the, the domestic tasks, the, the chores, pero hacíamos cosas, cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla, but we used to do things like um, uh, clean up our, our bedrooms, tidy our bedrooms, uh, lay the table uh, and, and clear the table, things like that. Rosa is satisfied with these answers. Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias. And I say de nada. So we've got lots of examples of imperfect tenses there. And we've seen some of the, the, the regular ones. And we've also seen a couple of examples of the few irregular ones. Um, and again, there only are three irregulars. Susan's pointing out that I, I, I made a mistake there. I said menos tiempo. And I think I was translating that. And I said more time. But of course, menos tiempo does mean less time. Sorry, Susan. Uh, sorry, everyone. Um, uh, yes, you're, you're quite right. I, I was getting mixed up and reading on to the next sentence before I, I translated that first one. But there we have it. That is a, 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 a translation. Well, it's not a translation. It's a transcript of what you've just heard. And what I'd like again is to hear how you feel about this. Did, did it seem easier with the um, with the, the transcript? Um, did you feel that you, you've understood it well? Based on the listening there, let me know what you think. The combination of hearing it uh, and seeing it, did that make sense? Were you able to identify those irregular, uh, those imperfect tenses? Let me know in the comments um, and you can do one, uh, two or three, or you can give me a little more uh, response there. L look forward to seeing your answers. Now, as I said, all of this is coming from our Masterclass course. And Masterclass course is an online course that runs in mo monthly modules. And uh, the monthly modules start tomorrow. Um, we've got six months over the next six months from September through to February. And we're talking about r short, regular sessions. Um, and of course, structured learning is something that we believe in very firmly uh, with, with Coffee Break because everything is about... Uh, progression and making that progression when you you build on what you learned previously and then there's a structure to it to help you take it uh, forwards. We're talking about audio content, text content and video review materials but this is still coffee break, it's still 20 minute lessons and maybe if you've got uh, three or four sessions of 20 minutes uh, a, a week then, then perfect that, that you will be able to uh, to, to complete the masterclass, no bother. Um, let's look at the, the contents of the masterclass. Over the next six months, we're going to be focusing on six different topics. Starting tomorrow, we've got a module on idiomatic expressions. Um, frases hechas is what you call uh, idiomatic expressions in, in Spanish. And uh, these are the kind of expressions that are going to help you sound a little more Spanish. You're going to be using these idiomatic expressions and we look at the, the way in which they're used in Spain and, of course, the similar expressions that are used in the parts of Latin America. In module two in October, we're going to be looking at tricky verbs. Um, tricky verbs are uh, things like verbs that you, you may think you're quite confident with, but actually sometimes they have more complex levels to them. Um, I'm thinking, for example, like a verb like dar. Dar can mean to give. Of course it means to give, but it also means other things. And we can combine dar with other uh, words and, and other verbs indeed. To, to make other expressions. So these tricky verbs, we'll be looking at five different or five combinations of tricky verbs um, or five sets, if you like, in, in module two. In module three, we'll be looking at false friends. And those are those words where um, you're fairly certain that you know what they mean, but it turns out they mean something completely different. Um, and so it's a, a module on vocabulary and really helping you develop that vocabulary. But just as we said earlier, when we're looking at false friends, in a sense, we're seeing what we've covered before. So it's again about that, uh, the, the progression. We're seeing uh, some of the frases hechas, some of the idiomatic expressions that we've learned. And we'll be also seeing some of those tricky verbs and they'll come back naturally into the conversations that we're working through in module three for uh, false friends. 
Module four is all about tense mastery. And uh, as I said, this, this one about the imperfect, uh, that comes from the tense mastery module. Um, we'll be looking at the preterite, the perfect, the imperfect, the future and the conditional in uh, that module. And we'll go through all of these uh, tenses and give you lots of examples. And you'll be seeing things uh, within the context of these conversations. And all the conversations are natural conversations featuring native speakers. And uh, you'll be hearing also lots of Latin American voices as well as Spain Spanish voices too. Um, that's in December, Tense Mastery. And then in January, it's time to tackle the subjunctive. We'll be looking at the subjunctive in Spanish and how it works, what it involves, how to form it, and some of the triggers that you need to think about when using the subjunctive, or indeed the triggers that make you need the subjunctive. If you're familiar with the subjunctive, you'll know exactly what I mean. If you're not, all will be explained in our module on the subjunctive. Finally, in our last module, we'll be looking at what we call tricky Spanish. So tricky Spanish is focusing on things like por and para, um, ser de estar, asking questions, uh, all these tricky things that the, that comes up that, that come up when you're learning Spanish, um, and that's coming in our final module in February uh, on tricky Spanish. Now, in terms of how it works. Um, as I said, it's monthly modules starting tomorrow. Short, oh, I think we've actually seen this. Yep, we've seen this one already. Let's move on to our schedule. <laughs> so the schedule, the, the, the schedule of the masterclasses is very straightforward. Um, the lessons come out on particular days. That means they're available to you. You can take them on that day or you can take them at a later point. It does. It, it depends on exactly on when you have time to, to take them. So on the 1st of September, tomorrow, um, we'll get a lesson. You'll, there, there will be a, 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 le a lesson available for you tomorrow. And then on the 4th, you've got a second lesson. And on the 8th, you've got your third lesson. So lessons 1, 2, 3 on the 1st, the 4th and the 8th of September. And then we take a little break. On the 11th, we uh, do uh, an exercise. So there, there's a short break between those lessons. Sorry. <clears throat> and then we're back to two more lessons in the 15th and the 18th. Now, you'll see there that the first half of the month then is, is focused on, on those lessons. But the second half of the month is all about consolidation. And you'll be able to consolidate everything that you've learned with the help of a video review that we publish on the 22nd. And then on the 25th, you get your module test. Also, in this consolidation time, you'll have a checklist so that you can check what you've learned um, and you'll be able to go through all the elements that you've covered in the uh, review and uh, you can work through it uh, and then take your test when it suits you. Uh, I am very aware that we're getting lots of questions in and I might actually just deal with some of these just now but before we come to it so Debbie's asking is each lesson a video or are some only audio in fact the main lessons are all audio um, and then the consolidation video summarizes everything with a video what we found from the, the feedback from our masterclass uh, students in the past is that the, the audio element because people are, are used to listening to our podcast the audio works really well because it ultimately means you can do the masterclass in, in the car. Um, you can do the masterclass when you're out for a run or walking the dog or something like that. And then if you've got time, you can sit down afterwards and work through with the, uh, the lesson notes and so on. So hopefully that answers your question, uh, Debbie. Um, and you've also asked, if I can understand and follow this course, then am I the right level? So if you're understanding what we're talking about here and it's pushing you a little, especially if in, in, in terms of the listening, then you are at the right level. I'll be talking a little bit more about uh, levels right now. Um, Miranda's asking, how much does it cost? I'll come on to that in just a moment because we've got uh, some slides to explain all of that. Um, Haley's asking how interactive is the masterclass, like with you, the other teachers and other learners. I'll be talking a little bit about the interaction. We've, we've got a, a system in place where um, basically we are providing lots of feedback to you on your homework challenges and so on. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but great to see Susan saying, I did the masterclass in 2020. It's the best course ever. Muchísimas gracias, Susan. <laughs> um, fantastic. Okay. Um, the questions are coming in thick and fast now, um, and I think what we should do, in particularly an answer to Camille's question here, um, should you have completed season two and season three prior to taking the masterclass, I'm going to talk exactly about that just now. So we have um, currently in Spanish four main seasons, season one, two, three and four of Coffee Break Spanish. Um, so 
for season one, we focus on content for absolute beginners, um, looking at transactional language, a basic kind of introduction to grammar. Season two, um, that's where you're building your understanding. We're looking at the patterns of the language, how it works, and also looking at some past tenses in Spanish in season two. And then in season three, we're taking the language further looking at more complex language and more tenses and tricky grammar. And some of you may be familiar with season three as uh, Showtime Spanish. So we, we, we kind of rebranded Showtime Spanish as season three of Coffee Break. Um, and uh, basically as, as Showtime season three, it's the same thing. And then Coffee Break Spanish season four is looking at advanced language, looking at complex, complex grammar and um, idiomatic expressions. So that's the kind of range of content that we that we have. And in terms of the European framework of language, uh, framework of reference for languages, um, season one would be A1, season two, A2, B1, season three, B1, B2, and season four, B2, C1. Um, if you're familiar with the European framework of reference, that will make sense. If not, don't worry about it. We're looking at kind of beginners through intermediate to advanced. Now, the masterclass comes sort of in the middle. It comes around the same time as season three. Now, I want to, to explain this a little because it's, it's quite important. Season three um, is a course which features lots of conversations and it also features our verano español and soap opera. And as you're working through season three, we come across certain points and we talk about them. So if we're having a conversation, if Alba and I are having a chat about um, a particular topic and perhaps a particular piece of grammar comes up, we talk about that piece of grammar. And in the S the Verano Español episodes, we talk about, obviously these are, are stories, it's a, a soap opera. So the language that comes up is the language that needs to come up to tell the story. The masterclass comes at it a different way. As you saw today, we focus on a particular piece of language be that the imperfect tense, be that the subjunctive, or be that a, um, when to use ser and estar, or por and para, or, or something like that. So if we've got a particular point that we're looking at, then the materials that we provide to help you with that help you understand that point in greater detail. So season three comes this way, where we're looking at the, the, uh, the, the materials and, and looking at the, 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 the language for the point of the, the story or, or, or for whatever we're trying to do with the language. And then we'll explain those things that come up naturally. Season, uh, the masterclass comes at the other way. We, we start with the language point and then we explain that using examples. So they very much complement each other. And that's why if you're working on season three, then the masterclass is perfect. If you've completed season two, again, the masterclass will help you lay a firm foundation for season three. If you are working at B1, B2 level in another course, then again, the masterclass will help you. And if you've not yet started season four, it's perfect. So um, Camille, in, in response to your question then, should you have completed season two and season three prior to taking the masterclass? You will find that if you have completed season three, then the masterclass is really useful for consolidating what you've learned in a very structured and organized way, and also laying those foundations for season four. If you have finished season two, but not yet season three, then what you'll find is some of the things that you're learning in the masterclass, you might be learning these for the first time, but then you'll put these into practice when you hear them in season two. I hope that makes sense. Now, coming on to the question that uh, Miranda asked about pricing, um, what price is the masterclass? So if we look at what you're getting for the masterclass on a monthly basis, you get these five self-access lessons per month. You get bonus activities um, like the, the consolidation materials and the checklists that I explained. You get a module test at the end of each module. Um, you get the email check-ins. We'll be checking in with you regularly by email to let you know that there's a new lesson available and so on. And then a crucial aspect of the masterclass is this guaranteed feedback. So in every uh, lesson, we set you a challenge. We set you a, a, a homework task. And this gives you the opportunity to put into practice what you've been learning within that particular episode or that, that uh, lesson. So it may be we'll ask you to write a couple of sentences using the, the verb or the, the structure or the tense or whatever that you've been learning. And then when you write these in the Coffee Break Academy, then we will come back and answer, uh, sorry, not answer, and correct that, provide some feedback for you. If you've done well, then we'll say, fantastic, muy bien. If you've gone a little bit wrong, then we'll give you some support to make that correct. Now, one crucial thing here is that the all the feedback is public. So when you post your sentences, everyone can read your sentences and uh, 
the feedback that you get will also be public and that way you can read your own feedback but you can also read everyone else's feedback so what lots of the the learners that have gone through the master class always comment on is the fact that the the feedback that you are being given is actually so useful because you're getting everyone's feedback and you're, you're learning together as part of a group and we very much try to foster a, an idea that um, it, it's absolutely okay to mistake to make mistakes. Indeed, it's more important to make mistakes because that way you learn. There's a, a lovely Italian expression that I often quote, and that is "sbagliando simpara," uh, by making mistakes you learn, and you have to make those mistakes in order to learn and to make progress. So. That feedback is ultra important to our masterclass and we guarantee that feedback on every single thing that you write and indeed we can also answer your questions about more general things linked to the, the lessons. So that happens all the time throughout the masterclass and of course at the end you also get a course certificate. So for all of this, in each of the six months, there's a monthly cost of £55.20, which includes VAT in the UK, or £46 excluding VAT. In the US, that would be $63 per month for the six months, and that's excluding VAT. Now, I should say that in some areas, some states, some countries, there are now um, digital taxes that are, in, that are added to that. Um, normally, those taxes are relatively small, um, what I would say is that when you go to the Coffee Break Academy, you will see exactly what the price is that you will pay. There's nothing added after that price when it's displayed on the checkout page. So you can check the price before you click buy or anything like that um, so that you know exactly what you're paying. You can pay in pound sterling or you can pay in US dollars. Um, and of course, if you're paying by card or whatever, um, that will be converted for your own uh, currency. So you can pay monthly and that's six monthly payments. It's not an ongoing payment, it's six monthly payments. It is a payment plan. So by committing to this, you're committing to paying for all six uh, payments. Or if you prefer, you can pay as a one-off. Um, so you get one month free in that case. It would be £276 in the UK um, or 230 excluding VAT. And the US price would be $315 excluding VAT. So again, check what exact price you will pay based on your local tax um, on the Coffee Break Academy. And uh, perhaps uh, the team who is uh, watching in the background, you could maybe post the link now um, to the, the masterclass in the Coffee Break Academy. And that way, the price that you see will be the price that you will pay. Okay. I realise uh, that uh, we're getting a little bit late. It's, 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 you've been with me for, for about 50 minutes now. Um, I hope that you're enjoying this. I hope that you're finding it useful. Just a few testimonials here. If you have any further questions, then do let me know. But we've had over a thousand students go through our masterclass over the past few years. Um, Melanie said, I am finding the masterclass extremely useful and convenient. The topics are nicely targeted to the needs of my level in Spanish and the materials and activities are well designed. I like the way the learning and challenges are delivered in doable packages that fit with a busy life. And that's exactly what we're trying to achieve with this. Heidi said, I signed up for the Spanish masterclass in order to accelerate my learning by studying with a bit more structure. I thought I was at the intermediate level, but I quickly discovered that I wasn't at the correct level for the course. It was too advanced for me. Now, for the great news, I still have access to the masterclass, so I'm continuing to study until I'm ready to try the course again. It's highly motivating to, and I think that's to with T-O-O, -O, or it's maybe highly motivating to do something that's just not shown up correctly on that slide. I apologise for that. Um, so, yeah, if, if you purchase the masterclass today, you have access to the masterclass for as long as you need it. Obviously, after those six months, we will stop responding to your homework and so on, but you will still have access to all the resources. And one final one from Elvin. Elvin said, I like the regular intervals of the masterclass, which really make me want to keep up and improve my Spanish by a little practice every few days. The modules are extended enough to really dive into a subject like verbos or frases hechas, but they're short enough to keep you motivated and work your way through them easily. Pues muy bien y muchas gracias, Elvin. Okay, um, so how do you register for the masterclass? Well, registration is now open. It has been open for a couple of weeks now. Um, and the course begins tomorrow. Um, so if you want to get involved, then you need to act quickly. The course begins on September the 1st and you'll be getting your first lesson 
tomorrow and that registration closes on September the 5th or when the class is full. And that actually brings me to Haley's question. Haley's asking, is there a limit on participants? Yes, there is. In order for us to be able to provide the kind of support that we want to with all of you, then there is a limit on the number of participants. So if you are considering this, then you do need to get in early. Every year we have people who come say, oh, I just missed this. Um, it, it's, am I able to sign up? But if the, the limit is reached, then unfortunately um, you will not be able to join. Um, Lily's asking what level is it designed at? We have talked about this, maybe you joined a little later, um, but Lily, you can, uh, the, the masterclass is aimed at intermediate students, um, B1, B2 level, um, to help you move forward from there. So, let's uh, summarise this. Um, you can access the masterclass from right now. Um, the the comment, uh, sorry, the, the link is in the chat. And you, if you would like to become a member of the Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass for 2021, then you should act soon um, and uh, uh, work through this uh, with us over the next uh, over the next six months. Um, Debbie is asking, is the module test self-marked? Um, uh, the module test is self-marked. There's also a final test that you will do at the end of uh, the, the session. Now, the module test is self-marked and we provide uh, feedback on why uh, each answer is the answer. We don't, don't just say, this is the right answer and we'll leave you to sort that out yourself. Uh, we will provide ex explanations of why a particular answer is the right answer. Um, the final test is automatically marked and when you get a certain uh, amount, you uh, well, when you complete that test, you'll get your certificate. Faye is asking how many people are in the class. Um, that depends a little. Normally there are around 100 people in each masterclass um, and uh, our uh, team, the masterclass team, will be supporting those uh, learners throughout the six months. Um, so hopefully that answers your question, Faye. Um, and obviously if we get beyond that number, then that's where it gets a little difficult and that's when we have to close um, the, the, the masterclass registration. Um, Debbie has another question Is it possible to join now but do September and October together? I'm currently doing a course that finishes at the end of September Yeah, basically because you have access to the, the, uh, the lesson contents And you can work through them at your own pace all we would say is that if you're working through, for example, module one in October and the team is focusing on answering questions about module two, then it's slightly possible that we might miss your responses. But I would stress the fact that the masterclass is something that you can do alongside other things. And again, it really is a case of, you know, you could listen to the, the episodes while you're out walking or in the car or something like that because it's it's possible to, to do this alongside other courses. So um, perhaps if, if you were to, to sign up now, you would be able to do this along with your other course, um, Debbie. Uh, but again, that's entirely up to you. You can you can work it through at your own pace um, and we will be there to, to help. Uh, and, and that's also maybe worth saying as well, if you've got uh, if you've got a holiday booked or if you're able, if you're able to travel, um, then uh, perhaps uh, you might be taking a couple of weeks off. But that's why we've tried to build in this month, uh, which is uh, two weeks of learning and then two weeks of consolidation. So if you're away for two weeks in the middle, you've still got the point, the possibility of, of catching up. Okay, I realise that some of you are watching this uh, kind of on, on replay and some of you are, are responding to questions that were asked a little earlier. Um, all of the information hopefully is in our, our live session here. I would like to say muchísimas gracias. I very much hope that you have learned something and I'd like to ask you to post in the comments, have you learned something? Do you feel you know a little more about the imperfect tense? Um, are you comfortable with the imperfect tense? Were you pleased to find out that there only are three irregular verbs in the imperfect? The, the, the key thing about everything that we do here at Coffee Break is that every single Coffee Break you take, you should move forward a little bit. Ideally, if we can help you move forward uh, with every Coffee Break, then that's 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 what we are aiming to, to do, to help you move forward that little bit. So let me know in the comments um, and uh, let me know what you, what you think of this. Um, 
Beth's asking, will there be all kinds of speakers of Spanish? Yet we've got um, a number of presenters over the course of, of the six modules. I'm in all the modules as a, as a, um, a, a, as a teacher, um, along with Marina and Rosa and Luth. So we've got um, uh, representatives, if you like, from uh, South America, from Spain, from different parts of the Spanish speaking region, regions. Um, uh, Veronica saying, fabulous refresher for me. I studied many years ago and forgotten a lot. Um, Rachel, thank you so much, Mark. This was very, very well organised, presented and engaging. Pues me alegro. Um, Haley said, yes, very nice. I'm signing up. Muchísimas gracias, Haley. We look forward to welcoming you into the masterclass. Faye, sorry, Faye is saying, good revision of the imperfect tense for me. Um, Mark, uh, oops, Mark's moving up there. I've studied the imperfect previously and this was a good review. Fantastic. And Barbara's saying, see, this will give me the extra practice I need to be able to use in expressions. Fantastic. Muchísimas gracias, Barbara. And I know Barbara's already signed up for the masterclass, so we're looking forward to working with you over the next six months. That's where we're going to leave it. Thank you so much for joining me this evening or this afternoon or this morning, wherever you are. Um, as ever, we would like to, to wish you continued success with your language learning, whether you choose to sign up for the masterclass or not. We'll be back with more Coffee Break Spanish content very soon. Um, and indeed, if you're watching on YouTube and you're learning another language, then we will be back with more content for that language very soon too. For now, um, I'm a little bit hoarse. I've been speaking solidly for two hours, so I am going to um, finish off here and say once again, thank you very much indeed. Thanks to the team uh, behind the scenes who are always there to help when we're doing these lives. Um, but for now, muchísimas gracias y hasta la próxima. Happy coffee breaking. Thank you.